what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video and man nxt war games fantastic and I, i'm not gonna lie to you just off the men's and women's war games alone is worth watching those two matches both go over 40 minutes entertaining as hell bro i'm not even gonna lie to you had me kind of marking out at some points both matches and um i want to say i did kind of skim through some of the other matches the only matches match that i was actually interested in watching outside of the two main war games uh matches were uh the triple threat match for the north american uh uh championship the nxt north american championship and um that was entertaining until certain parts of the match so i'm gonna actually talk about that first because i really want to get into the men's and women's uh uh war games match but all the other matches i kind of skimmed through so i'm just going with the matches that i was interested in and interested in and watched so let's start with the triple threat match um i like the fact that they really was going with the storyline of leon ruff being the ultimate mega underdog both competitors johnny gargano and damian priest not really taking him serious at all like they're just like yo that's cool you got the championship but you really don't even deserve it like you you basically won on some fluke type stuff that's how both of them kind of came off especially johnny gargano and i must say johnny as a heel is great johnny as a heel is fantastic i love seeing him as a heel he it's it's crazy when you have someone that can be a great fa a baby face and a great heel and you he makes you want to see him get his ass kicked and that is great great work man um the match itself was entertaining for the most part uh it was it was it was cool it had some slow moments for me uh but it was mainly just basically Re leon ruff trying to you know prove that he deserves to be the champ and i like i said i like that storyline of building the ultimate underdog you can't go wrong with that type of storyline but when the match kind of fell off for me when you got four random dudes in scream outfits come in and basically jump damian priest and i'm thinking wait a minute halloween was like a couple months ago what the hell is happening here why is this happening and basically they end up jumping him damian priest handles them one on four by himself so i'm like all right cool but i knew that wasn't the end of it because they just it was it made no sense i get it's a no dq match but what the hell is going on here then i want to say towards the end of the match damian priest has the upper hand against johnny and then all of a sudden one more ghost face mass individual comes out with a steel pipe and just bashes him on the head with it i'm like what what's going on and of course by the results of that um johnny argano ends up getting the win gets the pin on leon ruff regains the title and uh yeah he's your new nxt north american champion once again um i'm gonna be honest with you here i didn't like that i didn't i don't have a i don't have a problem with johnny winning that's fine cool he can win i just didn't like the booking of how he won it gave me wwe main roster vibes let me know if i'm the only one that felt that way because i feel like the main roster would do something like that where they have four random guys in masks just randomly beat up somebody in the middle of a match because it's a triple threat match and there's no dq like that made no sense to me and then when you find out at the end it's austin theory i i don't really know what's going on with that storyline he's he's come back to align himself with johnny i don't know i'm guessing but it it's still it's just like you can involve somebody in the match without that hokiness if you're gonna find a way to get austin theory involved there's other ways to do it i, I just felt like that was kind of hokey that was main roster garbage i don't like that that's the only real negative i can really say for this show even though i enjoyed the match that 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 kind of brought it down for me because i was like what the hell is this man this is main roster garbage it does not belong in nxt in my opinion so comment down below let me know if that bothered you like it did me so all right now when it comes to the men and women's war games i'm not even gonna lie to you i don't know which one i like better i i I, I'm, I don't know i really i really don't know bro 
I don't know which one I like better. They both were just equally entertaining. The women's war games match. I'm going to start start with that one. Started off the show so great. Like I didn't any other match that followed that. I didn't think it was going to even come close. Even though Tommaso Ciampa had a match. I didn't care because this match had me just glued. Like I was just entertained. I was taken to an ultimate high. I had to take some notes because there were some ridiculous spots in this match. And I'm just sitting there thinking, wow. Women are actually doing some insane spots in today's wrestling. Like, I never thought I would see today. I'm so used to the panty and bra matches from growing up to see women actually getting, like, real hardcore with these, like, these weapons that they're bringing in. Like, this was insane. So, first things first. I want to say one of the sickest spots that was took place in this match and shout out to uh to Io Shirai she was taking some massive bumps man um one of the sickest spots bro I'm not gonna lie to you Dakota Kai basically double stomping Io Shirai from the top rope onto onto uh onto Io Shirai while she has a trash can on top of her bro insane the trash can just completely compacted. She couldn't even get the trash can off of her to get the pin. Go for the pin. That was insane. Hell, Io Shirai couldn't even get into the match officially because they wouldn't let her in the match, which is dope because they're building up her as a very strong uh, women's champion, which she is. So she goes to the top. I found it kind of weird. This was kind of hokey to me. She put the trash can on her head and just jumps down. Falls on everybody. That's how she got, in, got into the match. Um, another sick spot, man. Ember Moon's top rope stunner to Dakota Kai was so goddamn nasty, bro. I love her top rope stunner. I love it. But, oh my God, bro. Jesus. That look sick. And this is Dub calling me right now. This is actually Dub calling me right now. I'm not even going to edit this out. Hold on. I'm going to answer this. Hello? Yo. Yo, bro. I'm actually recording a video right now. I got you on speakerphone. <laughs> you what? I'm actually recording a video right now. I got you on speakerphone. I'm keeping that in the clip, man. Hey, I'm going to call you back when I finish. <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Dub, man. Shout out to Dub, bro. But, yeah. So, what was I saying? Top rope stunner to the, uh, to Dakota Kai onto two chairs. They were placed right where she would land. Ember took, oh, that bump was nasty. I know her back was in pain, but, oh, my God, bro. It looked disgusting. How she hit that on those chairs. Beautiful, bro. At this point, and like I said, they're bringing in kendo sticks. You know, at some point in the match, bro, went, oh my God, they were just getting brutalized with kendo sticks before EO Shirai. She was a, um, before EO Shirai could actually get in the match because they wouldn't let her in the match. Bro, the women just start brutalizing, brutalizing EO Shirai's team with kendo sticks. I'm just like, yo, this. This should have been a hardcore match, bro. This is more hardcore than anything the WWE main roster puts on. No lie. Um, and of course, man, I, I the ending of the match, bro, you knew something was going to happen with that ladder when Io Shirai brought it in. I'm like, bro, somebody's going to get hurt. This looks nasty, bro. Raquel Gonzalez, who actually had a nice showing, bro. They, they, She was really the dark horse in that match. They really made her look strong and uh formidable i'm not even gonna lie to you uh raquel gonzalez power bombing eo shirai through the ladder all the way to the steel supports that hold two of the rings together at that at that point i knew the match was done like she's not kicking out of that like you kick out of that you're on some john cena roman reigns level type tomfoolery you know what i'm saying so uh yeah bro that that was that was an enjoyable match. Nothing but carnage. I feel like the right team won. Candice LeRae's team definitely deserved the win. Give the heels the win here. It builds up. Uh, it builds up. Um, uh, Raquel Gonzalez. It, 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 and it's crazy because you know she pinned the champ. 
You know what I'm saying? And and Io Shirai, she was fucking it's Io Shirai, savage, bro. It, this doesn't really hurt her too much. But enjoyable match. At this point, I'm beginning of the show. I'm hyped. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, all right, let's see what the men's uh, war games match, how that's going to play out. Not going to lie to you. It, bro, this was so good. So goddamn good, bro. And I, I like the starting to Pete Dunne and Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly has really been growing on me ever since his match with Finn Balor, bro. I, I, he He's definitely got some main, uh, main event talent to him. Definitely, man. Dude is intense, stiff as hell, bro. Their back and forth was impressive, bro. And I, one thing I like about the Undisputed Era and how they booked them so far in NXT is they all can all hold their own. When Kyle O'Reilly was in there by himself, he was still holding his own for the most part. It was two-on-one, still holding his own. Then um, it's like each member, they just, whenever they come in, even if the odds are against them, they have this type of energy and momentum where it, it doesn't really matter, bro. It, it was it was, it was, was so entertaining to see them on the face side of things because when Undisputed Error is any like anytime they're involved in anything face or heel it's gold this is why i don't want them to ever go to the main roster <laughs> be honest with you they don't need to go they're too good for the main roster face or heel they are fantastic and this showed it individually it showed the, how good they are and that's what i loved about this match basically individually showing them how good they are just one person by themselves like they're important to the team uh they started introducing the cricket bats in very uh, painful ways. Pete Dunne, man. I, the dude loves to manipulate bones and joints. My man had Kyle O'Reilly's leg <laughs> bent over a cricket bat while one of his other teammates is beating him over the head with it. Like, bro, this is brutal. I'm like, Jesus, man. Like, Pete Dunne is, man just a brutal just uh he's a bruiser weight you know it makes sense the guy is brutal as hell man um what else i got here on my notes i like the fact that when finally pat mcafee gets involved he brings out tables with undisputed error each member of undisputed error is like name on the table I, i'm like that that's pat mac that sounds like a pat mcafee thing he is i never would have thought in a million years someone that's not really just a wrestler like that full time actually put on a great showing once again this is second match really <laughs> at war games and he put on a pretty good match he's doing crazy bumps he's doing flips through tables like yo this is insane like I gotta give it to him man he's good as a heel where you want to see him get destroyed but he's also pretty good in the ring he's not bad I'm just being honest with you he wasn't bad at all very entertaining um now one thing I, I i towards the end of this match everything started ramping up boys was getting hit with finishing moves oh it was it was it was it, stuff was ramping up i'm getting you know i'm invested even more because i'm really at this point i don't know i'm thinking you know the way nxt books things like i'm not sure if the faces or the heels gonna win this because you would think okay well the heels won the, the the women heels won the uh uh their match so i'm thinking well by default undisputed has to end win this but this is when i started having doubts pat mcafee kicked out of the panama sunrise towards the end of this match bro i'm like bro no no way i'm 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 flabbergasted at this point because i'm like wait are they gonna give both the heels to win at war games bro it was i literally at that point i was shocked i was like bro he kicked out how what what dude kicked out man then pete dunn oh my god there's a chair just placed in the ring bro standing up normally pete dunn hits a bitter end he hits the bitter and I had to pause because I'm, I'm visualizing how brutal this is. He hits the bitter end on Adam Cole and Cole ribs hit the edge of the chair. Oh my God. It was like his, you know, his chest area. Oh my God. That was brutal. That was nasty. I'm like, oh, the match is over. 
Cole is done. You don't kick out of a you barely kick out of the bitter end. You don't kick out of a bitter end, hit on the edge. Oh my Jesus. Lord have mercy. But it was also fitting that the guy that started off the match be the guy to win. Kyle O'Reilly type ropes it after, you know, uh, one of, um, I'm, I can't even think of their name. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, one of the, the tag team members from uh, Pat McAfee's team. He's laying on the ground with a chair over his face. Kyle O'Reilly hits him with the knee onto the chair that's on his face. It kind of busted him open a little bit. And Kyle O'Reilly ends up getting the pin, wins the match for Undisputed Era. Everyone looks brutalized and broken. Even Undisputed is looking kind of, you know, you know, soft, sore and rough. But guess what? They won the goddamn match. It was entertaining as hell. Undisputed Era ain't going nowhere. Thank God I don't want them to go to the main roster. Keep them there, Triple H. Because this is great. So I don't know which one I like more. The women's match had a lot more <laughs> weapons of mass destruction involved, but the men's match, it, it had some weapons, but it was it was still entertaining, bro. You just wanted to see Pat McAfee get his ass kicked. It was it was great. Both matches were fantastic. Like I said at the beginning of, of the video, bro. Those two matches alone. You can just watch those two matches alone, and I think you'll be satisfied, bro. They're both over 40 minutes. Watch those two matches. If you don't watch anything else on War Games, watch those two matches. You'll be fine. Simple as that. So, comment down below. What? I, I got to ask this. I'm, I'm not even going to really go into the other matches, but what was your favorite War Games match? Was it the men's? Was it the women's? Or you can't decide. I can't decide. I'm not going to try to. I can't do it, bro. They both were fantastic to me. So comment down below which match you guys enjoyed the most. Ah, man. This was great, man. This was an enjoyable way to end off my Sunday night. Not going to lie to you. So this is going to be a late upload. So, hey, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the late video, early morning video. I'm, I got to get this out to you guys as soon as possible. But I appreciate all the love and support on the channel. Road to 30K, man. I appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace